All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to um, our latest workshop slash webinar. We're gonna be working alongside today uh, with Katie and Mark. And um, hello, hello. And we have Suzanne from Makers Making Change. I'm sorry, I had to get all the, push all the buttons. So hello, and you're here to learn about using Makey Makey as assistive technology. And I'm gonna go ahead and say hello to Suzanne first from Makers Making Change. If you could just say hi, Suzanne, and tell us a little bit about Makers Making Change. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm the regional coordinator for the central region at Makers Making Change, which is part of Neil Squire Group. Um, we make affordable assistive technology for people with disabilities and we have chapters and I welcome Katie and Mark and Colleen from the Bay region and in Michigan and uh, this is a fantastic opportunity for people to learn and I encourage you to you know, continue to participate and visit our site and find out what we can do and to work with your uh, with Katie and Mark and Colleen it's a uh, this is just great and I'm, I'm looking forward to learning lots from you guys because uh yeah, that, uh, that, that this is phenomenal. So good luck with the session. Thank you, Suzanne. Thanks for coming. I'm gonna I'll go ahead and hide your screen so you, when you need to go, you can go. I think I can. Um, all right. And then we also have so I'm Colleen from Makey Makey, and you probably know about our device, but you may not, and we'll get into that here in a second. But I want to introduce the lovely on my she's on my. I don't know if this is my right or left. Now I'm kind of confused because it's right on my hands, but left on the screen. Um, Katie Butsu from Michigan and Mark Lyons. If y'all will just say hello. Hello, everyone. I'm Katie Butsu, occupational therapist here in Michigan and also the Michigan chapter leader for Makers Making Change. Hello, my name is Mark Lyons. I'm a technology integration specialist for Bay Aranek ISD and a uh, REMC director for our region. Awesome. Um, it's so good to have you guys here. And it's really hard to push all the buttons, but <laughs> I think we got it. So we're going to just get right into this. Um, I invited Katie and Mark, actually Tom and I invited Katie and Mark to do a webinar last year, right before COVID. And we just kind of all got stuck. And it's like, we just made a whole year. We hit pause and now we're back. So um, we're really excited to finally share your ideas. And we did do a really big involved um, workshop with Makers Making Change earlier in the year. I'll put a link in the chat so you can see some of the amazing assistive devices that were created during that. Um, I'm still blown away by the Braille calculator that Tracy Zhang made hey. during that, <laughs> that um, workshop. So that is actually live on our site. You can go look at how to make the Braille calculator and um, everything you're doing tonight. We're going to have guides published tomorrow from Katie and Mark for you to, to access. So this is recording. This is live and it's recording and We'll send you all the information tomorrow, I promise. I pinky swear. <laughs> Take it away, Katie. Got it. All right, so first off, I wanna just thank, um, obviously, Makey Makey and Makers Making Change for making this possible. Um, like Colleen had mentioned, opportunity to um, do a two-part workshop um, with participants from all over um, back in the fall, and then we're able to show and tell all their awesome ideas um, in inventions that they have created using this um, simple yet amazing device. And so um, we were just so excited to gain more uh, awareness to what it can do and all the possibilities. And so it has been just a great um, learning experience for both of us. Not only if people have taken the ideas we've created and changed them, modified them, um, put them to use, or if they came up with something on their own. Um, we're also just so thankful for um, being a part of Makers Making Change and using um, 3D printed and other maker type tools um, to create assistive technology for the individuals that we service. Um, so for those of you that have um, followed um, us or have, um, we're not new to you, um, I'm Katie Butsu, as I mentioned, I'm an occupational therapist here in Michigan. Um, I primarily am a full-time school-based therapist, but I also work in an outpatient neuro and pediatric setting. Um, I was first introduced to Makey Make just a few years back, um, and then Mark and I um, are both part of our assistive technology committee within the school district in which I work. Um, we started using it with um, primarily um, center-based children that we work with, um, so kiddos that are more complex bodies, uh, 
children that are more uh, severely cognitively impaired. And we started creating a variety of um, tools, switches, and then also just kind of started to take make Makey to help gamify therapy. So if you haven't um, signed up for all of the workshops, um, there is going to be a, an additional three more after today. So we're kind of breaking up a couple of the activities that we've created and are um, going to dive deeper um, with step-by-step -step instructions so you guys can learn to build those. So um, going back to the basics. So what is a Makey Makey? We're gonna let the expert explain that. <laughs> Oh man, and I'm muted. All right, so if you're new, I keep putting the Makey Makey behind me. Oh, it's in my lap. That's funny. Um, hello. So this is Makey Makey. It is a. It wasn't really made to be an assistive device, but it was really made just to think of as the ultimate digital duct tape. So um, you can take this invention itself as an invention, this creation, plug it into your computer, and allow it allows you to control your computer with everyday stuff. And really, I think when this was made almost 10 years ago now, y'all, we're coming up on our ninth anniversary. Um, I think Jay and Eric were most excited about just kind of what can control your computer and what can make fun sounds and music and things. I know that was sad, Katie. You can fix it. No one can see you. Let me spotlight myself. Uh, <laughs> Are you taking it down? All right. Um, so anyway, you can control anything. And actually, I'll share one of our newest videos for anyone who's new to Makey Makey. I'm, I'm kind of, I want more people to follow our YouTube channel, but you can control anything with this crazy little thing. And what we found right away was people started using it as assistive technology um, and using it to create um, more accessible devices for kids. And, and that's because it's just so easy to plug and play and use. And it's kind of just universally friendly because it, it looks so fun to you, so. Oh, you have the slides now. You have to hit the next button for me. Okay. I am here. Oops. All right. Oh. oh, you've got this video. So, yeah, let's not hear Colleen talk. You can play it. Oh. It wants to work. Whoop. There we go. <laughs> I think that's good. That's it. It shows you. The space bar. Oh, well, yeah, you can go ahead and let it do Play Doh. And actually, we go back one slide. I think what's kind of amazing, and I think the reason it has, oh, it was, I guess it was forward one. That's this one. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, what's really amazing is that it does work with things like pencil lead and water and vegetables and aluminum foil. And what I saw really recently was like, um, I saw a kid actually do a project where they were hooking it up to play Minecraft because you can do WASDFG in Minecraft. But um, Chris Stringer, who's been coming to our, our webinars a lot lately, he helped he and his students designed a foot controller for a student that could only move their foot. So they can play Minecraft now where a kid who couldn't play Minecraft before and now they can play because of this, because just of that plug and play awesome ability um, of Makey Makey. So I just thought that was really cool. And that, that's my beautiful hand drawing of Makey Makey. And an up close personal of the Makey Makey. And I think people, I do think people forget about the back of the board. The fact that you can use WASDFNG are really important, especially if anyone has been playing old school games. So like those are the keys that started before there was a mouse. You use WASDFG to move. Um, so there's lots of games out there that already have that programmed. And then if you're doing the programming yourself, you can easily use those keys. So. Yeah, you can play it. You added this one? <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite things to do is to see what is conductive. Jacket. What you do is put anything you think is conductive across the two tape traces. If it's conductive, well, look at that. Broccoli's conductive. It'll light off the LED. I have one connected to space and one connected to earth. So if I try this sponge, not conductive, but if I add a little water to it, it is conductive. So let's just start teaching me a little bit about what might be adding conductivity. Is it the moisture? Is it metal? Is there a change on it? 
Now see, it started to go off and then it didn't. Ah, because we gotta make sure our connections get all the way bridged across. So right here, they're not quite making it, but they're almost making it. I'm gonna throw my change on there and it work. Get the light switch part. I like the light switch part. Keep playing. A makey makey works kind of like a light switch. Whenever you cross the two paths, you're getting the circuit to be complete. So I've turned on the light and it works. So that's because I really like the light switch. I feel like it helps people who have trouble with earth and another connection. You always have to have a positive and a negative. And actually, I just saw recently a really good video by an another ambassador, Yui from Conductive Music. And they make videos for like preschool age children um, and, and older, but they had this great video and she was like, remember, you always have to have a positive and a negative. And she's like showing how, how she's holding the makey makey on a giant makey makey in the video. I'll try to post a link, it was a fun video. But I think the light switch is a really great idea because it helps you really think about like, okay, I'm pressing a switch, the same as turning on the light switch and the same as pushing the button on your computer. The switch opens and closes the circuit. And so that's what that light switch shows you. And you can make anything into your switch. It can be a human, a banana, two humans, a dog, a cat. <laughs> All right. So um, when I had seen a Makey Makey at first, I had definitely um, been introduced to it for the more traditional um, use of it. And I had saw it hooked up to a banana. I thought it was pretty neat, but then was like, how and what could I use this for um, with the kiddos that in which I service? So I had mentioned earlier that I um, am a school-based therapist primarily, but I primarily am servicing um, kiddos that are between the ages of three and about 11. This is my typical caseload. And so the kiddos in which I work with, um, their level of severity, their level of difficulties and um, conditions really vary. So whether that's a physical condition um, in which they are needing to um, or they get qualify for occupational therapy, or it's something that they have a cognitive delay. Um, so when we think about switches, and Colleen captured what a switch is in general, um, we also look at switches and how that is a form of assistive technology. So for those of you that um, are like, what is assistive technology? And I wanna know more. Um, Assistive technology can be anything from eyeglasses. Um, so a lot of us wear glasses and we don't think of that as a form of assistive technology, but it's ultimately helping us increase independence, increase accuracy with our ability to see. Um, assistive technology can be something as low tech as a uh, pencil gripper. So something that's allowing someone to hold their pencil um, more correctly or um, accurately. And then it can be anything to something super high tech. So sometimes we see individuals that are using um, some form of a tablet or an assistive device to communicate. Um, and so ultimately, when we think about switches and switch accessibility um, within occupational therapy, we're looking at a switch being like an on off button. So if a child struggles with accessing a toy, um, for example, like a Tickle Me Elmo toy that you have to squeeze, um, you have to have enough coordination and strength to activate the button um, in its hands or its feet. Or we often see a lot of those like VTech piano toys and they have to be able to isolate their index finger and be able to press um, the different buttons to access the toy. Um, a child that doesn't have the strength or coordination or the cognitive abilities might not be able to access an age appropriate toy. So a switch allows them, um, it works like an on off button, but allows that individual to have independence. So this little boy in the picture is using what we call a Big Mac switch. So I brought one today. If you haven't seen one, this is probably the most commonly used switch that's out on the market. Um, and so what that switch allows the individual to do, so whether they have enough strength or coordination to be able to hit it with their hand, the switch is ultimately activated and then it activates something on the other end. So it, whether that's a switch accessible toy, um, it might be something within their environment. So individuals that are switch users that are older um, might use that switch to be able to access their coffee maker or their blender. Um, it might help them uh, with turning their television on, um, or it can be something that's a computer-based program. So ultimately, that's what I kind of came to my mind of, well, that's what a Makey Makey is. It's a switch and it's allowing someone um, access to their keyboard that might not be able to type. It's allowing someone that wouldn't be able to operate a mouse on a computer. Um, and they're able to do that from a variety of different materials and can truly be customized um, to meet that individual's needs. Um, so switch accessibility ultimately allows someone to be an active participant. So 
we often will see out um, within the classroom or in a therapy session where we see a lot of that, what we call hand over hand assistance. So someone else is guiding the motion, but then it, it definitely takes away from the child being able to do it and perform and be able to play and learn and do those activities in which they're trying to do. So in this picture, I just think this is pretty neat is this is something that's out on the market and that little blue box is called a power link. And what that allows someone to do is allow someone to use something that's plugged in. So for example, the sewing machine, um, and then it allows you to put, plug in an external switch so that they can gain access to um, that uh, plug operated appliance or game or toy. So occupational therapy, we really focus a lot on um, what we call establishing an individual's occupational profile. So we always look at um, the person from top down. So what can they do? So not necessarily what can't they do, but what can they do? So they might have very, very limited mobility. And maybe the only thing that that child physically can do is um, move their head to one direction. But that one direction can gain them so much access to other things if we can think outside the box and give them that tool or that form of assistive technology to be able to do that. Um, we are definitely what we call like the experts in adaptation and modification. Um, so we really try to tweak things so that it's individualized. So um, not everyone's on the same game because not every child wants to play the same game or not everyone's playing with the same toy because um, this little boy doesn't want to play with the one switch adapted toy that we have. So we really try to um, individualize it to meet that individual's wants, needs, desires, and then their strengths. And Katie, I'm going to add something into that. Um, when, when we do this, we're, we're working with the individual that needs a switch. Um, but for 14 years, I was a special ed teacher, uh, ASD uh, teacher that would do push into the gen ed classrooms. And we would always try to educate the, the peers that were in the gen ed of why he or she was using this device, it kind of take, took that kind of um, wonder away. Uh, it made them realize, you know, that uh, they can do everything that the, the kids in the classroom can do. And I'm hoping that uh, throughout the years, as we educate the, the gen ed, um, because they're going to be the next teachers, the next lawyers, the next doctors, they'll, they'll have a better understanding of, um, you know, uh, adapting in assistive technology. Yeah, and since even when I graduated occupational therapy school, I, there's really been a shift um, in seeing a little bit more of the maker movement come to life and how that can play into the world of therapy and in the medical model. And so I know I didn't know anything about the maker movement or what a maker even was until I was really exposed to that in the school. So I'm, I'm so grateful that um, I have this nerdy brain that likes, enjoys creating and um, can take that and then take that clinical side of things and really allow that to mesh um, and see this all come to life. Um, so makey makey is ultimately we as therapists, if we've got therapists tuning in, is a low cost intervention tool. It's something that I can take into therapy and probably use it a million different ways. I might have 10 different patients on my caseload that day. And with just a couple movements of my hands, I might have um, you know a variety of different activities that can come to life. So similar to um, we talked about makers making change in the beginning of um, today's session, makers making change offers a huge library of open resources of um, maker type assistive technology, whether that's using 3D printed um, materials or PVC piping. Um, they have wonderful. Um, low cost, and that's a big thing I want to really uh, talk about is the cost because we know if you are a therapist, that cost and money, or if you're in the education world, that's always going to be a barrier that we have to face. Um, so this really allows um, access for a lot of individuals where um, money is a factor. So those Big Mac switches cost a hundred dollars. Yes. So I was gonna say, so it depends on. So this one's a Big Mac. They're going to be anywhere from like $75 to $100. Some are Bluetooth, so then you can gain access to the computer. But ultimately, the Makey Makey is going to already give you access to the computer um, directly through that USB cable. So and before we build it, yeah. I know you're trying to move to building it. But if you go back like three slides where she has the picture, um, one more, I think, or two more, the that one. What is that called when you buy those? It's like a speech board or? Yeah, so there's, that's um, a form of assistive technology. It's called AAC, which is augmentative and alternative communication. Okay. So something really low.
can be anything from an individual pointing to a picture. So it might be a picture of a stop sign and they're telling you to stop or it might be a you know green, so it means go, or it might be a simple picture of bubbles because they really want bubbles and they write, request something. Um, it can be something all the way to really, really high tech. Um, there's devices that are um, like, there's called the Toby Dynavox, there's um, by, devices by PRC, and those might be on an iPad or something more advanced, like it's called an Accent 1400, and that uses a computer-based system to communicate. Um, and then there's things in the middle of the road that's considered more of like a mid tech. And so that might be, um, it gives you the voice output, but you just have pictures of like six, which would be something that you can easily customize in this picture right here. So for example, if a little preschooler is at circle time and you want them to make a choice of what song do they want to listen to or what song do they want to sing, you might have pictures of row, row, row your boat, or you might have a picture of um, if you're happy and you know it, or some animals for um, Old McDonald, and then they could use that to communicate what they want by making a direct selection. So you can kind of see in the picture on the right, um, this little girl obviously has some very limited range in her hand. She has what we call like some abnormal tone, which would affect her ability to access something like a Big Mac. Um, for those therapists that are tuning in, I had shared with Colleen earlier today um, that it really the biggest thing I want to hone in on the, the pressure switch we're going to make today is it really can be an assessment tool too to see um, engage how much strength your kiddo or your adult or the individual in which you're working with needs to be able to access a switch and also that positioning so and, and one more thing is when I was in the classroom a lot of times when we use a switch or used a makey makey it was, it was uh, Katie talked about uh, the independence sometimes it was like the first time they really experienced the independence and it was us teaching them um, the cause and effect. If, if you touch this, then you get that. Yeah, so for today's session, we're gonna be making two um, different items. So we're gonna start with what's called a pressure switch. And so we're gonna start with this one because I really think it helps to just understand of that Makey Makey is a switch, understanding that um, basics and of why we kind of started out with this. So um, if you don't already have your materials ready, I do have that on the screen. Um, I'm gonna move to the next slide here in just a second of like the why you might use this. So um, you're gonna want cardboard, bubble wrap, foil, scissors, and marker. If we were in school right now, we'd play a video, a go, a go noodle, and we'd there you go, go get our supplies. <laughs> And so um, we really talked a lot about like what a, what an actual switch is. Um, and so when we look at those Big Mac switches, like I said, it's going to gain someone access to a toy, um, whether that just be a cause and effect toy or um, allow them to turn on a blender or whatever that might be in their environment. Um, but the nice thing about the cardboard switch that we're going to make today, um, you not only are going to be able to allow someone to gain access to online games or activities, but it can easily be customized or adapted to meet an individual's needs. So I've used this not only as similar to a Big Mac switch that someone's activating with their hand, but it also can be positioned um, on a headrest if you're trying to see if a child has enough head strength or head control. Um, it could be really if a child is only able to use their one foot or their one knee movement using what they do have and um, allowing this to gauge like do they have enough range um, where it's positioned um, this could gain someone access to a communication um, tool just kind of similar to the picture we just showed you um, it allows you to work on a variety of your skills so you're working on their coordination because they have to be able to plan that motor movement of like when they position their hand over it the ability to push down and activate it and release um, and really it was intended to basically be a tool for any kiddo that or adult that's a switch user or as an um, assessment tool of really what switch might um, we use or what might we look um, a little bit further into. Katie, go ahead and press on the icon there and we can show them the quick video that should pop up a Twitter feed that our, uh, that our friend Z made, I think a long time or not too long ago, but that's gonna show you a quick Display. This has been like a game changer for me because working in our AT and our AAC position within the ISD, we know this child needs a switch, but we don't really know what kind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we only have one of this kind of switch and a kid's borrowing it and then we don't have access to it. And it's like by the time I would be able to see if they even have the skills to be able to do that. This is like a great way to almost do like a trial and error. So. I've actually used this to position it on a wheelchair to try out a head switch for a kid. 
And it's just, okay, they obviously could activate it. I've used it for kiddos that I'm trying to identify whether they can use full arm movements to access a Big Mac switch, how much pressure that they can actually apply. It's a great tool almost to assess where their skill set's at. If families are in that waiting game of getting assistive technology from somebody, $50 for a makey makey and some cardboard and some bubble wrap, if it's ultimately going to allow them access to the computer, access to some games, access to play, it's a great tool to be able to do that. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get building. All right, Miss Colleen, you're you're muted. That's that's a that's a first okay. so, Hey, you're <laughs> muted. Hey there, you're muted. Um, I think what we should do is well, yeah, I guess leave that up for a little bit. But what I was gonna do is um, I'm obviously gonna highlight this other camera, but we could just actually, if everyone will let me know, I did make the screen bigger. If you can in chat, just gives me a thumbs up or something, and let's let's get started. Let's build this. Let's do it. There we go. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yep, just perfect. Do that. <laughs> All right. So for today's demo, I just have a smaller piece of cardboard ready to go. And so and this actually just came off of the box and it's so perfect for Earth Day. We're recycling. So I was excited about that. <laughs> it's like we planned today's on for perfect. We're recycling for Earth Day. I love it. Recycle, reuse. So I have what's called zip snips. Um, I had mentioned you can have scissors, whichever. These are just the fancy dancy quick version. So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna wanna start by um, cutting out two equal size um, pieces of cardboard. Um, this doesn't matter how big or how small. So this is really ultimately gonna be what size switch you want to do. So I'm gonna do something pretty comparable to um, a Big Mac switch, just cause that's the one I was showing you guys earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead. It's very strong cardboard. Apparently. And we're, we're using bubble wrap today, but we've also used uh, foam. Um, there's there's a multiple things that you can use for the pressure, and you can use bigger bubble wrap for you know uh, you know less sensitive switches. And you can also use Amazon packages because they've got bubble wrap, and Lord knows that I get those every day. Yeah, I forgot about that video. I really okay. love that video. I'm gonna add it back into the the guide for this, but that is a really good visual to show because the yep. bubble wrap, you kind of can't see that you're cutting a hole. So exactly. yeah, when you're making that bubble wrap as an insulator and you need to have some space, I like the packaging for that. So I'm going to go look for an Amazon package while you guys keep going. You got it. So then once you've um, pieces of cardboard prepared, we're just going to get everything pressed and then we'll go ahead and we'll assemble. So next what we're going to do is you should have a piece of just aluminum foil. And we're going to make two pieces of aluminum foil that are going to be a little bit smaller in diameter um, so that they're going to fit inside of the cardboard. I got my package. I was going to show you guys too. I have, have these amazing cardboard scissors. These are also still, you can still buy these. They're, um, well, they, I'll have to put a link. I forgot what they're called. As I show you an amazing tool you can't get. I got my Amazon package. Colleen just got that off her porch. I did. So like I said, you're going to want two pieces equal in size, a little smaller than the cardboard. And just in case if we're going too fast for you, I'm gonna put in uh, the chat uh, a link to the video that we showed you and you can kind of go back and pause it. Check it out for yourself. Alrighty. So we've got two pieces of cardboard, two pieces of aluminum um, foil. Next we're going to prep. You're going to need two additional pieces of aluminum foil. These pieces are going to serve as tabs. They're um, going to be what we actually pick up the Makey Makey to. Um, so these are just going to be coming out of this side. So just two smaller pieces, just like that. And next is cutting the bubble wrap. So the bubble wrap is actually going to go around the frame of this aluminum foil. So you're going to want it to be pretty similar in size to that. But you need a hole. Yep. 
And just in case if you're new to Makey Makey and you make the switch and you hook it up and it does not work, that's okay. Makers fail forward. So as you get used to how Makey Makey connects, you know, creates the circuit, it's gonna get easier. So the first couple of times when you're doing this, you're like, what did I do wrong? What's not touching? What's not connected? Don't worry about it. It's all, it's all part of the process. So then once you've got your bubble wrap cut, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, like Colleen had mentioned, you're going to cut out the center, almost creating like a window so that aluminum foil and the conductivity of that can pass through. The bubble wrap is actually just serving as, um, it's going to actually, you can use it for, um, to gauge how much strength or pressure is needing to be applied. So if, for example, somebody um, is pretty weak and um, strength is a factor, you might want to add more so that a lot less pressure is needing to be applied versus if you um, only use one piece or a little bit less, perfect. Um, then you'll have to deal with um, needing to, uh, if you put less, you're going to have to push a lot harder to be able to access the switch. And if there's any therapists that are out doing homebound services, but they're in the home, this is like a great chance of you, you looking around and seeing what the, the kill has in their own house. There's a lot of things they have you can adapt with to make you make All right. So now it's time to get going with assembling it. So for um, setting it up purposes, and you'll see this in the guide that's released tomorrow um, or mentioned, um, what I've done is I go ahead and I label these um, tabs just so that you know um, where you want them hooked up if you are new to Makey Makey. So, for example, um, I'm going to have this be, so you need one to at least be your earth. So I'm going to have this tab be my earth, and I'm just labeling that so it says earth on there, if you guys can see that. And then I'm going to create another one, and I am going to pair this today with a one-click game you could um, use any of your keys like she had mentioned so whether you're playing a game that's an up key and or you maybe have two different cardboard switches and you're using an up and a down or a up and a click um for uh demonstration purposes i'm going to do an earth and then i've got one that says click so now what we're going to do is we're going to get assembling it so you should have your glue stick ready what you're going to do is you're going to glue all over this piece of cardboard. Before you place your aluminum um, foil down, you can go ahead and put that tab right in there and it's just gonna be sandwiched right in between. And bring some pressure, you can see that. And then we're gonna repeat that same step almost. We're gonna put glue all along this outside where we're going to put our bubble wrap. I repeat the same steps over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue down on that cardboard. Place the tab on that outside. Place that aluminum foil down here in the center. Gluing along the border or the outside. Second piece of bubble wrap. If you didn't want much pressure, you could um, just stick with one. All right. Then what you're going to do is your switch is complete by putting it together like this. Something you can do is you can add a rubber band or you could add something to um, be able to secure the outside if you didn't want it to come apart. Um, you could also just add a piece of tape. Um, something else you can do is also adding an image out here. So for example, we talked a lot about today, this being that switch, and you're gonna often see that with a Big Mac switch, is people will put a visual or um, an image underneath that overlay. So that would indicate what you're doing. So for example, today, if we were doing this with a one-click switch game that maybe makes the cow go moo, you might have a picture of the cow on here, and every time they push down, it would say moo. So next piece of all of this is going to be setting it up. So. And putting the images on there is great. And if you're just using the switch for a uh, generic uh, use, 
You can also customize these with Thomas the Train. If the kiddo loves Thomas the Train, you can take Thomas the Train duct tape and put around the switch or princess stickers or whatever you want. You can kind of make it as cool as you, uh, as your imagination can go. So. All right, so you're gonna start by going ahead and plugging the um, Makey Makey into your computer if you've not done so already. And then if you have not plugged, there's this little spot where you're going to add in this other end. Ooh, I heard it. <laughs> We're in action. Your Makey Makey comes with um, a bunch of these. These are called your alligator clips. Um, your alligator clips are going to be what's going to connect it. So if you did write down on the tabs, um, that'll help indicate where your alligator clips are going to go. So if you can see that, you're going to click one end. I've got mine hooked up to earth. And then I'm going to click put the opposite end on the earth section of the Makey Makey, which is this bottom bar all along the bottom. Doesn't matter where. My second alligator switch clip is going to be used with the click button. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add it onto the other tab over here. Got it picked up to click. All right, now I'm gonna try sharing with you guys. You gonna give me remote access? You wanna try? No, I guess I could go, go somewhere and you could give me, and you can control my computer. Yeah. Okay, where do you want me to go? Let's go to Owly Boo. I like their game, so it's O, W L I E boo.com. And then you're going to click on pressing keys. Okay. Let me do this. Let me see. So, first, I'm going to share my screen and I'm taking everyone to Alley Boo. And then I'm going to give you, Katie. Should I give it to you or Mark? Who's computer? Uh, Mine. <laughs> okay. So, I'm giving Katie remote control access. Um, you can play now. I think you can right. hit play so, now. Let's see here. So go ahead. I don't know if we're gonna hit play now for me. You want me to hit play now? Okay. Yep. Pressing keys, yep. clicking and dragging. Which one are we doing? Uh, pressing keys. Okay. Sorry. Pressing keys. Okay. All right. Give me just a second here. I see Nemo. <laughs> I took me a second. I was like, is that Dory or Nemo? Which one is it? Couldn't remember. All right. So yeah. can you pass control to me? There oh, we go. yeah. You're doing it. If you hit share sound it, um, down at the bottom under the uh, share screen options, if you hit yeah. share sound, they'll get the sound effects on there. Let too. me um, fix that. I'm, make, I'm trying to make the screen bigger. Sorry. Let me sh make this. Okay. Now you hit the button. Got to pass control back. To, oh, there we go. I hear the shark. <laughs> da, 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 da. So that you was can, scary. You that I'm just pushing down. It activates that click button, and then it's ultimately going to go ahead and go off. Oh, there's the crab. There's crab. And I will say these are awesome, just quick cause and effect ones. My one little kid loves noisy games. And so there's like a dog one and the dog just barks a different million different ways. So these are quick one click switch games. Um, so if you're working on that, if you're working on something, um, you're trying to see if the child can differentiate between two, you might want to use something that has multiple um, keys involved. For example, like the Makey Makey Bongo app has uh, oh. um, two options. So well, let's do it. Let's try it out. Okay. So, well, what are you gonna have to change your? What are you gonna put it on space? Yep, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to space. Okay. And then you're gonna pass control to me if you haven't already. Oh, still, you still have it. All right. I think Sometimes so. If it doesn't register, I've learned from Colleen. Just re plug it back in. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Try it now. You should still have remote access. Maybe you don't. No, you do. It's showing me that it's activating. Let's try again. 
Try hitting space on your computer first because it sounds like it's doing something funny. Because you should actually want to hit space on your computer and it worked. Try that first. Yeah, that's not working even. It sounded like it was trying to click on something. Uh, Katie, we show uh, the makey makey where the clips are attached, like a uh, yep. close close up. All right. So on this game specifically, maybe bring it right up to the camera there. So there we go. That's better. And the, there's going to be um, pictures that are attached in the guides that are put out tomorrow. Sorry, mm -hmm. I did that for you guys. Um, so depending on what um, you have it hooked up to, your one end is always going to be the earth, and then you're going to have that second alligator clip hooked to what you're trying to access. So on this first game, we had it hooked up to the click. Um, those were all those one click games. All Move right. To space. That was me doing that. <laughs> I tricked you. All righty. So okay. as you can see, the, op the options are endless with what you could do with that um, as far as just a basic switch and trying to teach what a switch is and that um, basic understanding. And Katie, I don't know if you've seen this, but we're working on a new app um, that your kids can play that they might really like if they like audio. Sorry, I'm going to click. I'm ready to play. So now... Will you try one more time to just, let me give you remote control again. I took it away from you, hang on. Let's try one more time. All I'm gonna right. give you mouse and keyboard control. I wonder if that's why, use your hands, try your hands without the switch. It sounds like your computer's doing something funny. I'm gonna say. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know. I'm not sure. Because I keep hearing weird dings. Woo! You're doing that, that, I think. You're definitely controlling my computer. Here. Yeah. <laughs> you're, de yeah. you're definitely yeah. doing that. Okay, now we're working. Yeah, <laughs> let's give it a shot. So I'm going to do the space bar. Okay. one end and then I'm going to hook up the earth to the other end. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. You did that. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. 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 Let me give you a different sound effect. Now do it again. Oh, it's me. Try it now. Oh, that's so weird. It's something about our control. It says waiting for Katie to control your screen. So it's definitely our um some I've had this problem now. If you oh, there we go. doing it. So I will tell you if you are using this, I am also because the remote. Of the state with of being in COVID and everything else going on. I have a lot of kids on the virtual platform. If you pass control and you're using this on the other end, you need to make sure that they click your screen first if you're using Zoom to pass control. So click I had to click focus. First. Uh-huh. Oh. And then it gave you access so that it allows you to control it. All okay. right. So. All right. We'll stop sharing that. That, But that is a, that's really fun. It's an interesting, first of all, the sampler is super fun. It's not quite finished, but it's, it's coming out there. But what else is really fun about that remote access is just like, it, it is a little frustrating if it doesn't work. But when it does work, it's super cool because you're playing the sampler on my computer. And I wasn't, I didn't even do anything. So I think that's pretty awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen again and we're gonna get back into that presentation. All right, so you guys see all the wonderful ways that you guys could use that basic pressure switch, how you can use cardboard, how you can use a cereal box how you can use those Amazon packages. Um, so next what we're gonna do is we've talked a little bit about um, how we've used it as a for switch accessibility, um, but also the more that this project came along and how um, the more comfortable I came with understanding and making making and how it works, I started using it more um, to almost gamify or use it as a form of technology integrated into a lot of just traditional um, interventions that I was using. Um, so this next one is this musical paintbrush. 
Um, so I'm excited to share this um, activity with you today. Um, so with this one, you guys are going to need a paintbrush and it doesn't matter whether you got it from the dollar store or you have a fancy dancy one. Um, if yours do, does have, if you can see me in the um, corner, um, any metal components, you are going to need electrical tape um, to cover that up. Um, otherwise, you just need a paintbrush. Um, you're going to need some speaker wire. Oh, put your, we put your, uh, I had, there you go. Yeah. So for example, on this one, this is just plastic, but some of them will have aluminum um, here. Uh, and if yours does have metal components, you're going to need um, electrical tape to help cover that up. Colleen, will you, uh, we're gonna stop sharing our screen here. Were you? Uh... Yeah. Thank you. You read my you mind. Guys are, you guys are already spotlighted. So we're, at, we're ready to see this. All right, perfect. So you need your wire strippers, your speaker wire, um, thick paper, water and paint to get started. All right, so. All of my stuff going. And I was gonna say, if you have alligator clips that you, um, let me see, what's the color? I don't mind doing this too. If you have alligator clips that, and you don't have access to some of the speaker wire or electrical wire, which you can go harvest old, you used to be able to go harvest old ethernet cables and telephone cables, but it's getting harder to do that now that less people have telephones to harvest. Um, you can actually, if you so dare, you can actually remove the head off of this alligator clip and you'll have, there's some wires there or you, you can just pull it straight off or you can um, use some needle nose pliers to kind of squeeze this open and, um, and that'll get you wires right there that you can put onto that paintbrush. Perfect. And if you are using more of like the traditional um, speaker wire, um, when you access the guides that are gonna be pushed out tomorrow, I did link just this um, specific one. This was just from Amazon, you can get it from Radio Shack or wherever else you buy these types of things. Um, but you're going to go ahead and you can split this down the middle so that you end up actually with two different pieces so you don't waste any. Oh, yeah. So you got a whole extra wire out of that. Exactly. All right. With your wire strippers, you are going to strip about an inch or so on each end of the wire. This is going to be how we connect. Woo. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I shook the whole thing. Looks good. All right. Same thing on this other end. Don't knock your phone over. Go ahead and strip the other end. So you, like I said, having about an inch or so on each so that that wire is exposed. All right, next. If you're, I'm going to demo this if you did have metal pieces on here. So if you did have metal on your paintbrush, if you're using more of like the fine paint uh, tip paintbrushes, I know like the dollar store ones, a lot of those ones will have um, the metal components to it. You want to just go ahead and tape those so that the metal is no longer exposed. So you can go ahead and I'm just using electrical tape to do so. From here, we're gonna go ahead. You can see that. All I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the exposed wires with the bristles on the paintbrush. And I'm gonna use another piece of electrical tape to help secure that in place. Awesome. And then after you secure that, you're just gonna intertwine that those wires right into the brush. That's gonna give you the connection to the paint and the, the canvas that we're gonna make a little bit wet here in a second. And I was thinking, I mean, if someone has, well, they're probably your occupational therapist don't randomly have conductive thread, but I'm just trying to like be inventive with materials here and think of what other things we could use if we don't have, if we wanna go spot buy speaker wire, if you happen to have thread that would work. Um, conductive thread. Wondering what else you could do? What else is soft and malleable wire stuff? Hmm. Sorry, guys. Just brainstorming yeah. out loud here. Out loud Looks good. 
All right, from there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our painting surface ready. So I talked about, um, in the beginning, we talked about water-soaked materials can be conductive. So um, your paper, and then with just the help of some water, um, it's going to allow the paper to be conductive. If you don't wanna use um, the water and the paper, something else you can use um, as your painting surface is actually just a piece of foil so they could paint directly on the foil. So sometimes I know um, three things tend to be an area of concern for um, kiddos that have maybe some sensory difficulties. They don't like the feeling of water or wet um, textures. So I might uh, use some of the tin foil. So with that being said, we're gonna get painted painting and this is just some cheap Crayola paint use whatever kind of paint um, it's really um, the paintbrush and then the uh, conductive surface that is actually um, creating the circuit so I'm just going to use a sponge to get this wet so as you guys can see I'm just wetting my paper all right, and from there, we're gonna go ahead and get this set up. So we're gonna go ahead and take our Makey Makey. Similar to what we were doing this last time, you're gonna start by, start from the beginning. Start by getting it plugged into the computer. So I've got my one end going in here. And then the USB end is going to be hooked up into the computer, like so. Now we're going to get the paintbrush hooked up. So our paintbrush is going to be our controller today. Um, so the paintbrush, your other end where, in which the wire was exposed is actually going to be what's hooked up to the alligator clip this time. So you can see I'm taking this alligator clip and I'm um, attaching it right to the speaker wire. I'm just kind of tucking it so to secure that in place. Um, you can kind of push down on that plastic overlay to like secure it as well. Um, if you wanted it to be more permanent, you could solder that um, depending on how <laughs> permanent you wanted it to be. Um, so for this one, um, let's try, I'm gonna show you guys a different app that we commonly will use as well. So I'm gonna put this on the click um, for demo purposes. And then the paintbrush, um, so we've got that hooked up to the click, and then now we need to hook up our piece of paper. So I'm going to take a second alligator clip. And I want to make sure that the part in which I have attached it is wet, indeed. Oh. Right, because the water sweat's making it conductive. It's Correct. making the paper conductive. So I've got one end hooked to our um, paper, and then I'm going to hook up the other end. I'm going to bring this closer just so you guys can see is going to be hooked up to that earth. Remember that earth is that bar is labeled earth along that bottom. Um, and it doesn't matter where on that earth, but um, that's going to be what creates or closes out the circuit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I think what I'll do it again, Miss Colleen, I might have, I think if I share my screen, it might yeah. be this time. I'll let you do your screen. Okay. Then we don't have to worry if it's remote access being weird. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna show me setting this up as well for people that have not used this before. So this, um, it, this website that I like to use, it's called Tar Heel Gameplay. Um, Tar Heel Gameplay allows you to create a gameplay. And what that ultimately means is we're going to load a YouTube video into here, in here and it's going to make it switch accessible. So I am going to search, uh, let's see here. Well, I work with all kids and all my kids love Coco Melon. So for demo purposes today, we'll show you Coco Melon. So all you're gonna do is um, you're going to find, search your favorite YouTube video. Um, and then up here, it says YouTube video. You're going to paste that link directly in there and click load. And you will see the video will load there. Now the nice thing about this is it actually allows you to um, create or how long you want that lapse period to be. So for today, we're gonna go ahead, let's do it for eight seconds. And then this is where that communication piece can really pull in or an understanding of what the switch is doing. Um, so I'm gonna do go. So every time, every eight seconds, the video is going to stop and it's going to um, prompt the child to hit go. And then um, the click is what's going to make 
the video go or play. Cool. So I'm going to got the makey makey hooked up already. Okay. Go. I'm going to get some paint here and then you guys can't see that already. Go. <laughs> Go. Has a very speedy hair. Speedy hair. Lucky tortoise said to hair, let's have a race. Have a race. Go. The lucky tortoise said to hair, let's have a race. Have a race. And so you can see if the child is struggling with fine motor participation or they really have a favorite song, this is a, a nice um, website that you can allow that child to get that instantaneous cause and effect. I had it set on eight seconds. So really if you're working on building wait time or things like that, um, or if the child is a little bit slower in processing, that allows them that time to understand like, oh, it shut off. I need to activate the switch again. Um, so that website could be paired with any of the switches um, or the activities that we're going to show you today or in the weeks to come. Um, but it's a, it's a nice one where you can really customize it and make it individualized to the specific child in which you're working with. Um, but we found really great success. I will um, go back to the slides here just to kind of show you guys a way that we've used um, this activity for a whole class. Um, so the Makey Makey Piano um, the actual website or the app extension for that um, has directional keys. So an up, down, left, right, um, I believe it has the space and the click. So um, you can have multiple kiddos participating in this. So we had it set up where there's multiple paintbrushes hooked up and we actually matched the color paint to the color that's being activated on the um, musical uh, nice. keyboard um, mm -hmm. on the, on the um, piano. So if the child is activating the up key, which might be the blue one, they were using blue paint to help build an understanding of that from that way as well, giving them that visual output. So here's a quick little video. <laughs> they were just excited that they created their own little band. That's as we so went fun. along so that's so um, fun now what now you can give them the sampler app and they can all make all different sounds and make music together and but what i think is cool you said that this helps kids that are learning to write with a pencil too like yep, if they, so it works on fine motor coordination um, visual motor their grasping skills um if your child is working on imitation skills so say they're working on um, some of their pre-writing they need to imitate you know, lying down often, um, especially at the population um, of kiddos with autism in which we service, fine motor is usually an area of difficulty. And so um, it's usually a, not a high interest area. And so um, we know that they usually love music or some um, highly stimulable things on the computer. So this really helps to work on some of those underlying skills, but in a more fun and engaging way. Yeah, and I'm sure we said this earlier, but it's, it's gamifying uh, therapy. Um, right. it's, it's making it fun. So the kids don't even know they're working on the therapy. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great way to do it. It's an awesome tool. So that's it for those two builds tonight. We appreciate you guys tuning in and we're excited to see the many different ways that you guys can um, use these within your practice or within maybe in your, in your home or with your own kids, um, different ways that you guys will modify it. I know um, since posting this on Twitter, gosh, maybe a year ago with the painting activity, I've had um, somebody in Canada reach out that they had used it um, in a psychiatric ward and they were using it for um, an individual for helping with regulation and um, just kind of helping to reduce some anxiety. What they did um, was using it um, with some calming music. And they, I loved that idea because I was like, that's totally not a, what the population I don't typically work with. Um, but I thought that was a great strategy because we know that there um, can be a lot of therapeutic benefits through painting and through art and expression. So I thought that was an awesome way to pair some music with it as well. Um, uh, so, so our next workshop will be May 20th, so about a month from now, and we're going to do the hula hoop controller, right? Yep. Um, and then, so that's, I went ahead and put a link in the chat. So you definitely want to come to that one. And the last one, 
I've seen this one uh, in different ways and used for different things. The last one is really fun. It's making your own DIY therapy ball Mm -hmm. by uh, creating a game controller out of a yoga ball. So I think that one's pretty exciting too. So I don't know if you want to leave a couple minutes for questions, if anyone has any questions based on today or if they need any clarification. I know that's a quick move and workshop, but we do have the guides coming out tomorrow and um, we do have um, a YouTube page um, that specifically does uh, capture what you need and how to create those in a quick little tutorial as well. Yeah, and uh, we're I, we're gonna have all those guides on our page, and then I'll try to make sure that uh, Suzanne has access to put them up on Makers Making Change, um, so everybody will be able to find their way to these to make these great things. And I, I, it's just amazing what y'all do. Like, I don't know, I I never really thought of um, using making Mickey as assistive tech. When I started with it, I was just blown away with like, what can I do that exists in the world? How can I make my own version of it? And so to see it just transform where it can actually help someone else and do something that they couldn't do before. It's so empowering. So it's really amazing. Yeah. And Thank I you for that. I was going to say, and for those that like the inspiration, even like behind some of it. So like the paintbrush really was for a kiddo that um, he struggled for sitting for more than 15 seconds at a time. And this was something that he sat for more than 40 minutes and engaged because he loved, loved, loved Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And so I just paired it with that. And he really didn't care what was on the screen, but he was getting that music, that instantaneous cause and effect um, wow. from auditory output um, immediately after. And it was just awesome to see. And that really opened up my eyes to like, we need to look at this tool as from a different lens. We really need to see like it as a therapeutic intervention and how we can tweak different, um, just typical therapy things that we're using out in the clinic. And someone, um, during COVID times sent us a video or sent us a little picture of their kid. They did a similar thing. Their child wouldn't sit still for, for, um, synchronous learning. And so what they did is they put a piece of foil on the chair and their little girl was wearing shorts. So they had foil on the chair and they had a fruit on the table and so to unmute, she would grab the fruit and it would unmute uh-huh. and she could talk in class. So it kept her seated yeah. because she wanted to click yeah. unmute and talk to people. So it's really, really cool. And that, that's just like a Zoom hack. It's got a short key, you can do space. It doesn't work with Google Meets unless your district has enabled the space bar to unmute just for anyone who wants to do that now. But hopefully everyone will get back in school, right? And not be, um, we won't be all doing asynchronous <laughs> I will say though, Makey Makey has been a wonderful tool for during COVID, especially because I have quite a bit of kiddos that, um, you know, we were hoping to figure out what piece of assistive technology in regards to um, switch accessibility, and then they were virtual. And so um, we've used that on the opposite end and we've shared their screen and we're able to see, you know, how they're doing with activating the switches. And so I've got one kid I had mentioned earlier to Colleen that um, we were trialing and it there's just trial and error of like, what can we use? And so we trialed um, something more similar to like using Play-Doh or a more gross grasp. We were trying to simulate um, using a pressure switch, something that you squeeze your hand with um, mm-hmm. to activate. And that was too much. Tone would kick in and you couldn't release it. So it would just stuck on whatever, you know, he was activating. We had um, trial doing a cardboard switch and he just didn't have enough range of motion and motor control to still lift his arm to position it over. And I had shared with Colleen really the fix who is using a piece of tin foil and he uses what we call like a swipe kind of uses some forearm movements to activate the switch and he's finally um, able to do that. And it's really nice. allowed me to dig a little bit deeper to find a, a commercially made product for him that's going to hook up to his communication device going forward. So it was a That's great so cool. Book. So you use makey makey and a piece of tin foil to problem solve what yes. you needed to use for him. Yep. And yep. now you're able to find the actual thing that you can, you awesome. can purchase to help his family. That's so, so great, Katie. Yep. That's cool. See, so I think that to me, that's like the magic of Makey Makey is it empowers the learner, but also empowers the teacher. Like it made you go, oh, I can figure something out too. So that you come, come up with um, a really great idea. That's super cool. Well, it doesn't look like anyone has questions. Um, we aren't losing people, but they aren't asking questions. So um, we'll, for tuning in. We appreciate yeah, thanks everybody for coming. And we'll be back next month uh, with the Hula Hoop project. And if you came or didn't come, the all the resources will be available on our blog tomorrow. Um, you can just go there and find it. Or if you sign up for our newsletter, 
Um, we send everything out and we'll be sending out a big wrap up next week of the guides and showing your webinar from tonight and promoting the next one. So thanks so much. We, we couldn't do this without you. Well, thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Thanks. thanks. Bye, everybody. I'm going to say bye, but I'm just pausing everything. <laughs>